Hey everybody, I'm Mark Antonor and I want to welcome you to the Blastworks Surface Prep YouTube channel. Today's a pretty cool day. Uh, we're going to do a review on the RPB T-Link respirator helmet. This helmet is primarily designed for painting applications um, and certain chemical applications as well. Um, at first uh, appearance, this seems like a pretty interesting product. Um, I'm going to give you just a quick few things about the uh, helmet and then we're going to dig in deeper and we'll come in close and take a better look at the various features of it. So just to make sure that I get this right, this is the T-Link respirator. It is included with the Tychem uh, 2000 hood and inside here is what they call a bump cap. It's not actually a helmet. Um, it's not a safety helmet. So it's going to be lighter weight. Um, it's not going to be as cumbersome on, on your head. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about why I decided to um, purchase this hood. Um, I'm new to the world of painting. Um, I don't really have any experience with it before. I do own for other um, home applications a, a respirator uh, that goes over your nose and around your mouth. It doesn't uh, protect your eyes in any way. The type with the canisters that filter out VOCs and they work great. However, I have discovered with a little bit of uh, training that I've done with painting that some of these coatings are pretty volatile and they really burn your eyes. And I also noticed that if you wear glasses, they're going to be a mess. And uh, two-part epoxies and things like that, trying to clean those off of plastic lenses, you might get away with it once like I did, but I have a suspicion over time they're going to turn into a wreck. So I thought, okay, well, the other thing that I know about is a full, uh, full face respirator, similar to what firefighters wear. So it encapsulates your entire face. Well, the problem with that is with the glasses, you know, you're not going to get a tight seal on the sides of that mask. So some of those volatile um, vapors have a good chance of entering into it. Um, and they're fairly expensive too. I mean, they're 170 maybe $200, and somewhere in that range if you buy a good one, which I think if you're going to uh, paint commercially, you really should have good equipment and not just stuff that you're going to buy uh, off the shelf at a big box store. So I looked around. Um, I own a Nova 3, an RPB Nova 3 blasting hood. I did a review on that. I'll, uh, I'll link it in the description. That's just an unboxing video. We haven't actually used it yet. There will be a video coming in the near future um, where we actually field test the RPB Nova um, blasting helmet. And consequently, there will be a pretty detailed video highlighting this unit uh, in its capacity as a painting helmet. Um, I wanted to take a quick minute and uh, thank one of our partners, uh, Sesco. This is Benny the Blasting Bear. He's our mascot. Um, he's wearing Sesco shirt today. Um, really good folks over there at Sesco. Full disclosure, I bought this at full price. I got no price break on it. Um, the only thing that did occur is at the time of the making of this video, RPB was offering a um, C40 climate controller free with the purchase of a uh, Nova 3 helmet. So I contacted uh, the folks at Sesco and I said, hey, listen, I've already got that helmet. Um, but I want to get this hood and I would like a C40 controller for that. So um, they were kind enough to extend that offer to me. So there's full disclosure. I did actually pay for this helmet. Um, so I guess the things that I was pretty interested in about this helmet is, and again, we're going to zoom in here in a, a minute and we're going to take a closer look at how this is constructed. But I like that it has a really wide field of view. Um, right out to your peripheral, so it's going to come way out to the sides of your, your head, so you should be able to see really well. And then inside here, there's a, uh, a plastic hoop that actually is similar to what you might wear if you were um, uh, working on a lathe or you're running a grinder like a face shield, which helps keep it out away from your face. So, uh, with that being said, let's uh, bring the camera in close and we're going to show you what it's all about. Okay, so here we go. 
Let's start with what's included in the uh, in the box. Of course, without mentioning the helmet. You get the breathing tube, the one end attaches to the back of the helmet, uh, this end attaches to the back of the helmet, and this end is going to go to your climate controller of your choice, whether it's a cool tube, a hot tube, uh, or the C40 climate controller. They also play with this belt, which it just has a hookup, as you can see, and the one end connects to the uh, end of the hose, and the other end, oh, and the other end clips into your uh, air supply hose. There's no regulation to it, it's just straight through. So whatever PSI you're running from your filter is what you're gonna get into the hood and the temperature won't be regulated. You also get, of course, an owner's manual. And uh, so I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't, I don't sugarcoat stuff. If I think something's great, I'm gonna tell you it's great. If I think it stinks, I'm gonna tell you it stinks. Um, I'm not real impressed with this instruction manual. It's a bit vague and I'll, I'll kind of explain what my, my major confusion is with it in a second. You get one of what they call a cassette lens, which I kind of don't get because I'm going to bring the helmet back in here. I don't see how it fits. Obviously you take the plastic paper, uh, the white plastic backing off, but it doesn't go to the bottom of the the lens, so I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be for. Um, I did also purchase separately um, a pack of cassette lenses, which uh, I'll show you those first before we go further. If you know through the camera, it's going to pick it up. You can see it's actually bigger. It's more of the size of the um, the lens in the hood. So I'm a little confused as to what this is for and the instruction manual doesn't really give you very much information. So, that's basically, basically what you get in the box. This is the C40 climate controller. Um, I'm not gonna open this. Um, if people are interested, maybe I can do a separate review on, on one of these, but essentially what this is designed to do is control temperature and airflow. So you have the ability to make the incoming air hotter or cooler and you can also increase or decrease the flow rate of the air. Uh, so that's the RPB, the C40 climate controller. All right, so that's what comes in the box. So let's flip this over and look at the back side. You can see that there's an inner um, neck guard. It's pretty soft, it's a cotton-like material that you would uh, cinch down uh, around your neck. And then there's two separate um, cuffs. The first one would go down inside of your clothing, whether you're wearing a blasting suit or I guess regular clothes. And then the outer one, this one would go over uh, over the suit, over whatever you're, you're wearing. Okay, so that's that. Now, let's really open this up. So what you're gonna do is over here on the side, of the helmet. The plastic lens actually has these tabs that lock over uh, lugs on the blast um, the hood. So you pop one side off, then you come over here, and you grab the tab, and you pop the other side off, and then this bump cap will come out. I think the best way to do this is like that. There we go. Slip it right out like so. Okay. So let's put the hood aside. Now this is pretty cool. This thing looks pretty space age. So you can see what I was talking about. You get this frame, this frame that goes uh, around your whole face that holds the hood out away from your, your face, basically. Um, you look inside, it has an adjustment on it, similar to a welder's helmet, to tighten and loosen uh, around your head. All these pads come off. There's a forehead pad. There's uh, these pads inside all come in, come out. They're velcroed in. All these things are washable in warm soapy water. And then there's also some adjustments. If you look in here, uh, you can adjust the pitch of the helmet. 
Uh, let me see here. Where are they? Actually, ah, back here. My apologies. Back here. Let's see if I can move this out of the way so it can be seen easier. Uh, there's one in each of the four corners of these, and you can adjust the pitch of the helmet um, so that it is customizable to the user. Um, and lastly, another kind of neat feature I think is this adjustable wind visor. You can direct the airflow coming coming through the back of the, the helmet and over the top. You can push more towards the, the lens or you can push more towards your, your face as the operator. Um, it seems pretty durable. I mean, it's not again, it's not a safety helmet, so it's not going to uh, protect you from something heavy falling. But I do think if you're painting a, a trailer or anything you got to crawl around underneath, you're going to, you know, protect your, your head from, you know, banging into stuff. I know ball guys like me end up cutting your head up pretty good when you um, go underneath stuff. So I think that's going to be a help. Um, the inside is a styrofoam, an impact type styrofoam on the interior of it. Um, so that's pretty much what it looks like. I'll turn it around so you can see all sides of that. And I'll also say it's pretty light. I don't think that weighs, I don't think it weighs three quarters of a pound. It's probably less than that. Um, so that's there. Now, I'm not going to, for time's sake, I won't put it, uh, put the hood back in, but it appears to me these cassette lenses, so here's the one that came with it, as I stated before, um, it has kind of a it's adhesive all the way around the edge, so I'm guessing you just stick it to the uh, sewn in lens, but it doesn't make sense to me because the bottom of it's going to get messy. Um, so that's the one that came with it. And then these are the, the tear offs. They have a tab to pull them away. And then there's adhesive in just in two spots here and here. So I'm not sure if you're supposed to put this included lens, adhere it more or less permanently, and then these tearaways just go over the top of it. And uh, you just, when you need a clean one, you just tear this throwaway away off, and this one stays in place. Um, I'm going to see if I can maybe get some clarification from RPV on that, and uh, suggest that they put that information in there. Uh, in their instruction manual because it's again it's not very clear okay so I'd like to thank you all for joining me today this is just a quick overview of the RPB T-Link uh, respirator helmet um, be on the lookout in the future for uh, a video where we put this out to use in the field and we'll give you our impressions of how well it works how well it doesn't work if I can get some clarification from RPB on how to use that lens system, I will definitely include that in there. I would ask you to like and subscribe to our channel. Um, tell me what you think, um, what I might be able to do better, what other information you're looking for, and what kinds of videos you'd like to see in the future. We do plan on making some videos of our, our blasting operation and painting in the future. Uh, so stay tuned, and I'm Mark Antonor, and this is Blastwork Surface Prep. Have a great day.